you going, yonder bound maiden? Where are you going, head to the sky? I'm going back to my garden. Fare thee well, tell me no goodbye. Can I join ya, yonder bound maiden? Can I join ya, tell me no lie? The road home is a hard one, fifty miles as the swallows fly. Hard wells can run dry. Then I water my garden with the tears at my baby's cry. Fare thee well, tell me no goodbye. Come on, your fears. Come on, they're gonna stop. They're staying in now. Get out of the way, you damn fool! Whoa. Hurry up, Doc. Get him! What do you think you're doing? You could have killed us! Here's my youngin. I gotta get him to a doctor quick. Well, not in this car. I'm on urgent army business. 20 mile on. You're hated that away. Please, he's real bad sick. Get off or I'll have you arrested. Hatcher, drive on! We're stuck, sir. But don't you go over the bluff. Here. Hatcher, I gave you an order. Now yeah. see here, woman, you can't. Your tire's caught up. I gotta cut away some of these saplings. I'll give you some rocks for under the tire. Be careful back there, lady. Take your child. Hatcher, drive on. Amos. How's the little one? Amos. He's turning blue. He's choking to death. Ain't no time for doctors now. Oh. Here, help me. Give me a rock. Under him. Now hold his head. It's tight. Hold his hands and feet down. He can't fight it much. He's past feeling anything. Hold him tight now. What are you doing? You'll kill him. Oh my God. Keep it open. Hold this here. I'll get something better. How'd you know what to do? Oh, it's dip theory. The choke. My pa saved a cow once that choked. Got a windpipe and put in a piece of tin pan. There we go. You're very skillful with a knife. I've always whittled. 
Axe handles and such like. But you shouldn't have cut down that poster. That's government property. They need factory workers as badly as soldiers. Ain't a man in our settlement left for him to take. Except in my man and... Or they called him now. Well, they can't exempt every little farmer, only those who produce a lot. There's a war on. I know there's a war on. Killed my brother yesterday. Killed in action is what the telegram said. I'm sorry. He was a farmer? One of them little ones. Hold on, honey. We'll be there soon. What do they grow around here? Young uns. For the wars in them factories. Do you farm? Some. My man hauls coal in his truck when he can get gas. We rent a place. Give back half what we grow, keep the rest. But I'm saving real hard. We're gonna have a place of our own one day. I, I couldn't I, think of I always aim to pay. Well, a dollar will do, I guess. Uh, here, I'll, I'll make a change. Much obliged. Good luck. I ain't never been to a doctor before. Lady, you can't be afraid of nothing. Just walk in. See a doctor quick. You'll have to wait your turn, ma'am. Have a chair there. Oh, my Lord, come with me. Did I do wrong? I couldn't just stand I by. I believe that you've done all right. Mrs. Neville, your husband's here. You tired? You'll have to stay up all night and watch that tube. If it clogs, you'll choke. I'll look in again around midnight. Mr. Nevels. Doctor. He's gonna be all right. I knowed he was bad sick or you wouldn't have gone off with your mama needing you so. Hope you didn't have to watch him get cut. No. I didn't have a heart to tell her. She's so low. Just lays there with that telegram in her hand. We all had to bag her to eat. Cleaned up her plate pretty good, though. She ain't so bad off, then. Oh, honey, you know how weakly she is. She is wondering when you come over and do the washing. How's Paul? Poor woman just can't get reconciled to Henley going without salvation. Wants to get the preacher in to pray to give her peace. Says she can't meet Henley in heaven if he ain't been saved. Mom could backslide and go to hell if she's so sure Henley would be there. Oh, Gertie, you so tore up, you don't know what you're saying. Henley ain't damned just because he went square dancing with me and Paul. Fifteen year ago. Besides, you was there, too. <laughs> well, why don't I get you some good hot coffee and a hamburger? You ain't never had a hamburger in your life. Don't go wasting good money. I'll be on Uncle Sam's payroll in a few weeks. You'll be getting money regularly then, every month. More than I ever earned around here. I don't know why they're calling a man your age. What's this settlement gonna do without your tankering? I wish to goodness you wouldn't call it tankering. People that can fix machines as good as me makes real money in them war jobs. More than any farmer. If we was living in Willow Run or Detroit, there'd have been an ambulance to take him to the hospital, too. You reckon the doctor would miss a board or two from this? I could make Cassie a jumping jack doll. Pass the time. Jumping jacks? Won't you make something a body can use? Oh, this wood's only fitting for dolls. I better get back to the kids. You need cash? I got some.
here. Hey, Miss Luck. Ain't nobody seen it but you. That's the money for our farm. You ain't gonna work your life away plowing another man's land. That's molasses money and the eggs I sold to Samuels. Them two shorts I butchered last fall. Three hundred and ten dollars. And now, three hundred and fifty. As soon as your poor pa gets in the army, we're gonna buy us a place of our own. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land in which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill. But they killed Uncle Hanley. Yes, they did, honey, but that don't change the rules. Now stop that, you bad youngin'. Don't do that, Cassie Marie. You'll be ruining it. It wasn't me, Ma. It was Callie Lou. Make her behave, Ma. She won't never pay no mind when she's got that Callie Lou in her head. Cassie. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to hurt you. You must have lessons to finish. Reuben, you got copying to do? Yes, ma'am. Cassie Marie, come here, honey. Bring your primer. Oh, my girl. Oh, you remember where we were? No. Yeah, I can find it. No, honey, don't get so far away. You can't see. Here, Bobby, you can play. You can play as my kitten. Look, Bobby. Here, now look. that'll do. Now. What's this word? Ball. No, honey. No, that's play. Listen. Come. Oh, Casey Marie, you got the whole primer by heart. No, that's can. That's easy. I'll never Gosh. get alone. No, don't fret. You're young yet. Gertie, we got to finish loading the truck. They ain't finished their lessons yet. Old John will be waiting. Come on, Jip. <laughs> Sorghum was real good this year, Pa. That's the biggest crop we ever had. Yeah, you done that, son. And Ma. I never warned your mama out breaking her back in some field. She likes it, Pa. All her life, she's had her hands in the dirt and always half the crop to old man Baloo. You know what I'd make in one of them big city war plants? Your mama could just watch your house. But she likes your hands in the dirt, Pa. About ready? Ma, could I go hunting? I done all my chores. I thought you was going with your mama to help your grandpa Kendrick. Oh, I'll let him go. He's worked hard all fall at Ma's in here. And Henley would have maybe gone hunting today. Be careful, son. Well, let's go. Shooting me and Cassie, son. Recollect we're going down past the old tipping place? Okay. Nobody been living here for quite a spell. It's for sale. Make her a curly skirt, Mama. 
Sure do. Purdy's the least of it, though. It's gonna be warm in the winter and cool in the summer, too. No matter how hard the wind blows, that house ain't never gonna shake. Ma, I seen a bear! A bear? Are you sure? Biggest old thing you ever did see. I shot at him, but he was too far off. I ain't seen a bear in these parts since I can remember. I bet he was fishing. We lived here, we'd get us a lot of fish out of that river. Here you go, honey. You know what's done a time your great-great-grandpa Kendrick owned all this land? My grandpa sold it to the Tiptons, and now old John Ballou owns it. I used to come here when I was about your size, honey. Look, Ruben, back in the hillside over there, there's this real deep cellar. Nothing never froze in that cellar, and there's fault in the summer, neither. And we put them apples and pears in our cellar, wouldn't we, Ma? Mm. We picked blackberries. Our own blackberries in our own fields. There's a heap of good manure around back. You been studying it? <laughs> Just passing by. There's a good garden place, too. Even if old John wanted to sell, and even if you had the money, Paul never let you. He'll be wanting a new truck or something, like always. Like he sold a cow last spring to get them new tires. He ain't gonna need nothing in the army. He's gonna want us to have a place of our own. He's always hated having to give away half of what we raised. Son, I'm fixing to talk to old John. Does Pa know? Well, we're gonna surprise him. Come on, Cassie, let's go see Grandma. Maybe if it, if it hadn't been for you, Henley would have given himself to God. You was the oldest. But, but he's seen you. He's seen you standing there, stiff-necked and stubborn in the face of Almighty God, and you never did repent your sin of dancing. Well, what are we going to do with that, Henley? Your pa is so mule-minded. I just have to sell this old place and move in with Mike. But Paul could never live in town. Oh, well, Gert, this war was all foretold. You ought to read your Bible more. I come not with peace, but with a sword, Christ said. Oh, he scourged in the world like he scourged the temple. And in his mighty room. Mom. Uh, well, maybe there's another side to Christ. Recollect, he, he went to the wedding feast, and he had time to fool with little young'uns. He was like Henley. He worked, and he loved his fellow men. And... Oh. Oh, Cassidy, Mary. Get my smelling. Oh, Ma. Oh. 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 And I'm mighty bad, constipated, you know, mighty bad. You just rest a while, Ma. I'll make you a cup of tea. Was Amos, I've been aiming to ride up and see him, but your mom's been so bad I couldn't leave. He's fine. How's your leg, Paul? Oh, it's nothing to speak of. But I sure was lucky having Reuben to help me with the fall work, and then the Kramer boys will help me a few days. I hear they went away. Headed for Detroit. Yeah. Get themselves killed in one of them factories up there if they ain't careful. I declare there won't be enough men left around here to dig the graves. Seems like they could have left us clothes to keep the mail truck running. Yeah, I hope they would. Maybe I ought to let him go to a factory. He wanted to. It's mostly me. I feared he'd want me and the young'uns to follow him to some city. Clothes is gonna be all right in the army. How's your rheumatiz, Paul? 
It's so cold for you out here. Well, you know how it is. The mess I make with all that whittling aggravates your mama so much. And it seems right now I've got to be whittling. What's this, Grandpa? Oh, Pa. It's real pretty. I ain't made a fiddle in 15 years. Mind me of Henley, I guess. And out here, don't do no harm. I wished I was close to her. Maybe when Clovis's army money is coming in regular, maybe I can move. The old tip in place? the road this is the last chance I'm gonna have to see you by yourself now here here Kurt oh you've been a good girl in some ways here take these those are for you father and I have talked it over you helped us a sight back in your younger days and, uh, and your pa and me we can we can get along somehow you and pa needs it worse than me and Clovis it was Henley's cattle money. He wanted you to have it. All of it. Well, um, was a dying witch. He ripped me from the army. If anything happened to him, we should help Gertie. You raised it, he said. with hugging. Miss Cassie hugged her more to death. That'd be a pretty piece of the paper, wouldn't it? Oh, Henley. Was you crying because Grandma says Uncle Henley can't ever go to Jesus? Oh, stuff. Body don't have to go to him. He's right here all the time. Have you seen him? Well, kind of like you see in Cali Lou. Did he look like a preacher dressed in suit clothes? No, it seemed he wore overhauls. And he made things like the grandpa. I ain't never seen his face. Seems to me he'd be always laughing. Laughing like I want the Christ in the cherry wood block I'm working on. When are we gonna let him out, Ma? He's a coming, Cassie. He's gonna bust out rejoicing one of these days. Paul's here. Time to get up. Hmm? It's your army examining day, honey. Coffee on the stove and water warming. You best hurry. Oh, Lord. My old woman trying to be shed of me. Oh, Lord. Look at that. Now get on. Shh. Lots of times I think you don't love me a bit. <laughs> You're a fine one to talk of love. I could be tied hand and put in a burning house. And if they told you the old grist mill was broke down, you'd run off first to see what ailed the mill. Oh, Gertie. You was jealous of machinery like it was another woman. I can't much blame you, though, for all my machine fixing and coal hauling. It's been a poor do. We ain't so bad off. There's a heap of folks seen it worst. Don't go wake the youngins. But I want to tell them goodbye. Well, you'll be back tonight after the test. I want to clean your boots. I look like I've been shaved with a cross-cut saw. Wish we had electricity and running water like Mag. Electric lights don't fill empty bellies. Your sister's got it easier than you, living in town. Her kids has got good schools. Our kids are learning. Always wanted you to have it better than Mag. Way better. 
You wasn't raised to eat sow belly in some sharecropper shack. You eating? I ain't hungry. You coming down with something? Girl, a man don't go off to the army every day. I wish you'd have woke the kids up. But it ain't like you was going for true. Honey, would you put some water in the radiator for me? But don't go trying to crank her now. I'm always telling you that that ain't woman's work. I could drive a tractor since I was as big as Cassie. There blows a wind down in the pine. It calls a name. Kiss me once before I go. Don't work too hard, don't grow too strong. If you must cry, don't cry too long. For I'll be back before you know. Just kiss me. What I don't, I think you know. Just kiss me once before I go. Can't you look what you're doing, Cassie? You're so messy, you're hot pig. Somebody else's basket. You took life. Didn't mean to spill it. You're always spilling something. Leave her be. You're the gumminous youngin. I ain't. Piggy, pig, pig. I ain't. Hey, Nick, one more word and I'll get your paw's razor strop. You can't do that, Ma. It ain't there no more. Kelly Lou's so mean this morning. I said, I'll show you what you'll get if you go on this way. And I took her to see the strop. And it weren't there no more. Paws took it clean away. Ain't Pa coming back tonight? You let him go without waking us? Has Pa gone to the war? He's gone, and we ain't never gonna see him no more. He'd go to one of them factories where they make bombs and stuff. Well, I guess he'll write us a letter telling us where he's gone. Hello, girl. We'll have news for Clovis today. Don't you fret. Miss Hall, three dozen. They're laying right well. Derek, where's Clovis? Ain't the mailing yet? Clovis ain't driving no more, baby. He's gone. Gone? What'll I do when the coal runs out? I can't cut wood to do no, no good. <laughs> I'll send Reuben to cut you some wood. What? Mamie's eggs. You seen old John? Not yet. My pa's gone to the war. My pa's flight airplane. You know, I'm afraid that her man ain't coming home. He's been missing in action so long. How? Ms. Hall, I just can't stand waiting. You got something for me to do? best hand with a hoe I ever seen. Well, I've had plenty of practice, Uncle John. <laughs> There's a little piece of business that you and me ought to get into. You want me to move and shame to say so? You're one of the best renters I ever had. But if you and me could do a little trading, your renting days would be over. 
seem like the time to talk a trading. Didn't you know they've tucked Clovis? Them army wages comes in mighty steady. I can rent pretty near any place I choose. Is that why I see you looking at the Tipton place, knowing it's for sale? Well, that's Uncle John. I ain't hardly give it a thought. But, uh, how much you give me to take it off your hands? Now, Gertie, I've known your old pa for 50 years. Now, Henley was his onlyest boy. And your old pa would give his good leg to know that you was always gonna be close by. Now, that place is yours, girl, for what I give for it, 500. Whatever you want down and the rest later. I can pay for it, Uncle John. Pert near all of it. Listen, there's a car. Was the car brought the news about Henley? A red cross light in a blue coat. Evening, ma'am. You've brung us word. I have a message from Mamie Childers. Miss Childers, your husband is safe. He's a prisoner of war in Italy. And I brought you your mail. Now, if you'll all pay attention, I'll call out the name. Thank you, ma'am. I'm the postmistress. I give out the mail here. Mrs. Robert Maples, McKinley Ogle, to the porch. Mrs. Harold Agee, Mrs. Gertrude Nevels, here's Postmark Detroit. Miss May Boyd, Miss Barbara Is he all right? They didn't get him in the army. Dear Gertie, well. I passed the army, but they said I would not be called for a right good spell. So I went to a factory like I should have done a long time back. I got me a job that suits me. It pays good. I sold the truck and it brang more than I paid. It was them good new tires. Now I am getting a place so you and the children can c come here to Detroit. I am sending some money. I will send more when I have a payday. You and the children needs clothes. I want you not to have it so hard. Write to me, Clovis. They's locked kisses too, Ma. See that big line of crosses? Don't go, Gert. He'll like it there. If and you follow him, he might never come back. Now, you know I'd never go up there. I'm gonna save just about everything he sends so he can buy him another truck when he comes back home. There's all them little flowers, all wrapped up for spring. Why are you bringing pine trees, too, Ma? We're playing them either side of the gate at our new house. They got the prettiest voices of all the trees, Casey. Oh, you better plant them real deep, or that bad Kelly will come and pull them up again. You see her trying to pull them up, you tell me. I'm gonna give that youngin a good twitching. You won't make it too hard, will you, Ma? She ain't a bad youngin at heart, just <laughs> full of jumpiness. Well, I'll just scare her. No hickory limb, I'll just cut me a twig from that little peach tree outside our new kitchen. Your mammy's done. When your poor daddy is all alone in a 
strange place and he is working so hard to put bread in your mouth. She bought us a place of her own. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. She turned her own children against their father. Look at your daughter, growing up like a heathen. She wouldn't be going to ruin if Clovis was around. She's just been over at Mamie Childers helping with the youngins. And that trash she made me teaching her how to dance. What are you fixing to order from this catalog, girl? Curtains. White curtains with blue bands for our new front windows. Child, you don't want curtains. You don't need curtains till you go to Detroit. Detroit? Yes, Detroit. Detroit. Your daddy wants you all with him, and your mama's gonna do her duty and take you there. Detroit, Detroit. Oh, this poor little fella. He needs somebody to look after. He's running around barefooted. He's gonna get that old group again. Mom, can Jip go to Detroit too? And can we take Miss Callie Lou? We ain't gone yet, honey. Clyde, make your grandma a cup of coffee. Your ma sent for me. The way she talks, about you think I was making a mint selling you this place. Twice I thought she was going to faint. Dead away. We both got to do our duty, Gert. I can't let a piece of land come between a woman and a man and her people. But Ma bought it. She gave you the money. You're going to have to give me back the key. The right's on her side, Gert. If Clovis is making a living, you've got to go to him if he wants it that way. But you asked. You said, did I want to buy it? You said I should be close to my pa. Yeah, but we thought Clovis was going to be in the army then, but he ain't. And it's what he wants that matters. You're his wedded wife. I'm sorry, girl.
Who'd have thought it'd be so cold in the fall this way? Here for the youngin. God bless you. Where to, lady? 18911 Mary Hill. It's close to where my pa works. At the Flint plant. <laughs> Which one? Old man Flint owns half of Detroit. My pa's helping make stuff for the war. He's fighting it. How fast can you go? I gotta drink this coffee. Don't smell like coffee. Hush. The smell froze. Now, where the dickens is Mary Hill? Well, I reckon it's a great big place. Three or four stories high. And we'll ride the elevator. Detroit's not like Kentucky, huh? How'd you know where we was from? I've met you at the station through two world wars. And you're going back pretty soon, huh? With money saved to buy a farm, right? One of them big bluegrass farms. <laughs> Yeah, it's overtime. My ears are freezing. This is it? This is it, lady. Oh, Cassie Marie. Freezing, Ma. I like the stove. I don't know how. It's easy. Look. On. Right down in there. It's cold here, but no kindling. Ma, Miss Kelly, you really don't like it here. Ma, I'm cold. We'll jump around a bit now. It'll warm us up. I gotta sleep. Why is he sleeping in the daytime? Shh. Maybe he's sick. Ma! Hand it, will you? I call the cops. I gotta sleep. They's a feared. And they's cold. So build them a fire. Ain't no kindling. There's kindling in my shed. Out front on the porch. Much obliged. Shed. He'll get you. He knows. I gotta get my youngins warm. Ma, keep the oven on when hers got no call. You're a hillbilly, ain't ya? I'll let it, Ma. I'm the fastest stuff Pa left. Tastes funny. It's pasteurized, silly. Like the school book says. There's a cow behind it somewhere. Rank it. Hey, y'all. These things ain't much. I didn't have no pork and clothes. Don't have ration points yet. Had to use a bit of bacon grease. I'm plum ashamed of myself. Told Clovis I'd start y'all a fire when I got up this morning to get the boys off to school. Then I fell right back asleep again till we'd I come yelling you'd come. <laughs> you said you'd knock my head off if I woke you up again. Sure is. Good of you to go to all this trouble. Well, it's like I said to Whit last night, a body's got to have something to make them think of home when they find themselves in this dump. You live with the man that yells? Oh, no, that's Victor. He's on nights at the steel plant. Don't you pay him no mind. He's all bark. Now, we live on that side. My man works with your daddy. I'm Saproni Meanwell. Y'all dig in now before this all gets cold. That 
Miss Mean will talk scandal like us, Ma. Why didn't she dress pretty? That slip. Body could see right through it. Maybe Ma was right. I did ought to be here with you, Pa. Why? It's awful stuffy in here, ain't it? Ooh, those double windows. The outside ones won't open. I tried. back on him. Oh, here, honey, let me look. <laughs> Fix his pants, Amy. It's 46 cents. I didn't ask for no ice. You gotta have ice, lady. Pay him, Ma. It's so hot in here, everything will spoil. Anything else you want, lady? Oh, honey. <laughs> hurt, just scared. Clovis, buy so much stuff and send us the truck money besides? Lord, woman, surely you don't think I paid for all this. Up here, everybody buys on time. How much we owe? Now, come on, Gert. I'm making big money. I done what I aim to do, got on as a machine repair man, and I'm good at it. You know what my paycheck will be this week? Better than a hundred dollars. Pa, we're rich. A hundred dollars? Well, I don't reckon I'll make that every week. Of course, that's for union dues and taxes and all. It ain't no fortune. Took real savings to get the down payment on all this. And the car. <laughs> got all these debts before we even come. How are you gonna manage with me and the youngins here? Don't worry, old woman. They like me. I get in a heap of overtime, too. Besides that, man real good with all the union men. Everything's gonna be all right. I'm glad you come, Gertie. I sure been missing you. This ain't hardly room to breathe in this place. So, Brony, come on here to bed now. I gotta get up and go to work here in a minute. I ain't ready to go to bed. I ain't finished my drink yet. Now, come on, baby. <laughs> Sophroni said 8.30. It's only just past 8. Hey, Fionn, split up. We go to public school. We go to your public school, hillbilly. The niggers and the Jews. Ma, I don't think people...
people up here carries baskets. I do. Oh, hi. Don't come home right after school. Come on, kids. Each come to school. You don't want to drag him all that way. Amos, honey, you come inside and play with Weed Eye. Ain't Weed Eye going to school? No, she goes second shift. They got more kids in space. Hey, Amos, you want a cookie? Prettiest place. You'll see. Be a big yard to play games and a big fine lunch room. Room with nothing but books. Here, kid. It's gum. You chew it. Don't be scared. Kindergarten's nice. But you oughtn't tell such big lies, lady. I had a time with Joey here on account of lied to him. He's your little brother? Yeah. Pop's always going on Pacific. And mom works a 73 shift at Flint's. Her one of them big dresses. Good as a man. Got a 14 hours overtime last week. Come on. Kindergarten's this way. Garcia. Is that how you say it, Garcia? He don't know English, miss. I seen him on my street. He won't play on nothing. He's a dummy. Now, stop that, Rachel. Garcia's gonna be our friend. It just takes a little while when you don't understand a word. Well, hello. Have you come to join us? This is Cassie. Cassar Marie. Hello, Cassie. I'm going to tell you a story in a minute. You came just in time. And on your first day, we let you chew your own gum. <laughs> You'll find it's much easier if you take your mittens off first. Chicle. Well, look at that. He said something to us. Give him a piece, can I see? Can you say thank you, Garcia? Thank you. <laughs> She'll be all right. Bye, Cassie Marie. Would you file these, please? Mrs. Zagorski talks slower. Olga. You understand Hungarian? It's got to be Hungarian because it's not Ukrainian. It's not Polish. Take this, will you? May I help you? I got to sign up my youngins. Name? Nevels. Is that basket from Poland? Kentucky's my country. It's beautiful. Are those wood strips? Wide oak splints. It's a beautiful color. You stained it. Oak weather's that away. I always like the color of clean weathered oak wood. It's as pretty as tobacco when it's hung up to cure. You carve, huh? You mean whittle? Backs, handles, and such? Hmm. Foolishness like dolls for youngins. Fill these out, Ms. Nevels. Thank you. When will they get home? Oh, about noon for lunch. You mean there ain't no school lunch? Ain't no place to eat. The little ones only come for half day know how. <laughs> this school ain't got nothing but teachers and kids. Too few of one and too many of the other. My name is Mr. Skyros. I'm the arts and crafts teacher. May I borrow your basket for a few days? I'd love to show it to the children. I've left four youngins here. I guess I could leave a old split basket. Oh, don't worry about the children. They'll be fine. They're young. They'll adjust. They'll what? Well, they'll learn to get along, be like the others. I want them to be happy. I don't know as I want them to. At least weighs not too much. 
You have good hands. Good for working. Oh, they're strong. An artist's hands. I'd like to see one of your dolls someday. Thanks for the basket. Can I help? Nobody can help. Maybe you get to go home soon. War won't last forever. This one will. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. Lord make his face shine upon thee and give thee peace. Are you a Catholic? No. I ain't. Try to sleep. I need a dream. What do you dream about? Spring. Spring. I like that. Thanks. Boot has went and done. Did you ever see such boots, Callie Lou, eating up shoes this away? Quit the silly talking to yourself, Cassie Marie. The kids will laugh at you. Get your mint. You make me late just waiting for you. I ain't a talking to myself, and I don't need you. You take me to school. Never no more. Now, youngins, don't fight. Cassie needs milk money today, Ma. It's the Christmas basket drive this week. Me and Ruth should take something, too. We need money for TV sales, too, Mom. A dollar at least, each. You think we're made of money? Oh, come on, Gert. If every nickel you spend's like losing a drop of blood, you'd be bled dry in no time. Cassie Marie? Here, honey. Take this to the Christmas basket drive. Oh, Ma, I don't want that. Lois? Morning, Gert. Whit? How's Soproni? Oh, she banged herself up to plant yesterday. She's okay, though. Uh, your man will be a little late tonight, Gert. Huh? Yeah, we got a union meeting. Bender's gonna be there. Who's Bender? He's Mr. Union. That was a good dream you gave me last night. I'm Max Dabowski, Victor's wife. You're Gertie Neville's, ain't you? This your youngest? Amos. He's cute. Hi, Amos. You going shopping? Uh-huh. You want to hold my hand, too? 
She's married too much, weigh 250 at least. You feed them or you lose them. Hey, Matt, want a hand? Oh, Gertie, I got some stuff that come for you from Railway Express. You come in and get it whenever you can. You want some coffee? No, thanks. Come on. Seems like all he has to do is raise his head and there he'd be. Ain't it something? Gives me the willies. To make that? It's Christ, ain't it? I always kindly hope so. I can't seem to find a face. I want him laughing. Not like these victors got hanging all over. Not a smile and a whole bunch. You got a good, steady man. Ma, look at the pretty necklace. That's one of Victor's rosaries. Oh, for heaven's sakes, we die? Famous? He's got dozens of them. Your husband? Depends on who you're listening to. Not if you talk to his mother. Why? Because we wasn't married Catholic. We was in a hurry, see? I was pregnant. Oh. My baby lived three days. Victor's ma said it was a judgment. I hate her. I ain't going nowhere near her damn church. Wouldn't do no harm. Well, we was married legal. And Victor knows that. He could shut her up. But he just lets that old witch jabber on about me and Polish. And Mama's boy. He ain't no man. Yeah, early. Ten hours. Enough. Oh. That's purdy. Victor, you only give Gertie here a hand with that stuff that come for. All the time. She wants genuine hand car for Jivik's. Who? My mom. You make one? Well, I don't know nothing about such like. I pay you. Fifteen, maybe twenty dollars. Make it um, this big. Well, if it ain't no good, you don't have to take it. It'll be good. Oh. 
down payment. I am a pilgrim and a stranger Traveling through this wearisome land I got a home in that yonder city Good Lord, and it's not, not made by hand I got a mom in your life, you get food in your bellies and shoes on your feet, and it goes to your head. Well, don't tell me you got shoes. <laughs> How does it feel to have shoes on them car feet? <laughs> no! Brother, no! No! I didn't hit your young and take hands up on my brother and I had a lump of coke. You're lying. No, he ain't. I seen it. You call me a liar, you hillbilly slime, and I'll have you run in. The cops listen to Joseph Daly, see? I'm a decent, respectable, religious American. I seen your youngin with a lump of coal. Youngin? Where's you get youngin? In Detroit, you gotta learn to speak English, you communist hillbilly. Who threw that? I didn't, Mr. Daly. See, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to hit you. Cops! Here come the cops! See? Now you get a ride. Cops don't get you for little old buses. If and it's me they're hunting, tell them I'm right here. They're not for you, lady. What do they want? 189 from Florida Hill. That's my house. Oh, I hope it ain't bad use about his pa. He's all fighting in the Pacific. I know her. She's on the shift after mine, runs a press. I didn't do nothing. You grabbed me like a little kid in front of everybody. Honey, he'd been drinking. And this is Detroit. You're going to have to quit carrying your knife. I ain't quitting nothing. I ain't making myself over for Detroit, staying and taking people's lives like you done. Ma, uh, my bubblegum boy's ma got killed. Oh, honey. Sick. Do I look sick? We had a walkout. What's that, a walkout? Oh, for God's sakes, Gertie. Everybody walks off the job. It was a protest. Some woman got caught in her press. It was Billy Hansen's mother. She got killed. We had a big slow fight, Pa. And Mr. Daly yelled at Reuben. Reuben better learn to watch his manners. Ma, you know that chickadee you give Cassie for the basket sale? Mr. 
Mr. Skyros paid three dollars for it. Three dollars? And he says, will you make him a jumping jack like mine? You can use the money. Your pa's hungry. I'll feed you until a little while. Oh, Lord. Burn. What's this? Fish. Thing wasn't sky high at the market. Lois, when them others walked off, couldn't you have stayed? If you want me to come home with a busted nose, when the union says walk, you gotta walk. <laughs> this ain't fit for a dog. What's got into your cooking? You got plenty to spend. You got all them ration books. I spent better than $25 this week for grub. Not counting the milk. $25? You can't feed seven good eaters on that. What's the use of living like this if a body can't save something? When we go back home, I'm... Save? That's all I've heard since we've been married. Millions of people don't never save nothing. They buy on time. They ain't always starving their young'uns, either. I ain't a starving nobody. You been buying the cheapest grub you can get? Look at this place. Can't you cover up the floor or something? I bought us curtains. Gertie, how much have you saved out of the money I've been giving you? About... about fifty dollars. You've been feeding us junk like that? Letting the place go like a pig pen? All my life, I wanted you and the kids to have nice things. I bet I'm making twice what any of them farmers back home's doing. For God's sake, spend it. Look at that cookware. That's the same old pot my mama gave us when we first got married to make do till we got our own. drop too much. It's not good to take the thing back in. Not too soon and don't cry. It makes them worse. I know. He ain't bringing. He just wants some new pants. to me real cheap and on time too it's real sweet of you clovis it's just i lived a long time without such for you. You want to go out? You can show them your building set. Kid stuff. Why do we have to stay here? Because your pa was working for the war, honey. Reuben, I ain't made myself over for Detroit. I'm still saving it. I'm saving everything I can for our own place. Maybe for next Christmas, you'll be sowing your grass seed. Oh, honey. 
Hey, Gertie, come here. This fine new doll you gave her and put it on this old thing. Cassie Marie, you come back here. Well, she's working. You got your electric icebox, old woman. I always wanted Clyde to have a nice store bought doll. She's too old now. What the money I spent. Little Cassie and Reuben. What did they want? Maybe they don't want things, Clovis. so she can get back to work. Yeah, gotta lay down. But I didn't fall, did I? I didn't fall. No. Flatty, you're gonna freeze yourself to death. You should've wore your snow pants. Ah, oh, Ma. The only place you need snow pants is in the movies. So the fellers can't get their hands up your skirt. Honey. Look, Ma. There's a parade. That's where power works. What are we gonna do about it? No, he'll be okay. What are you doing here? It's open house, Pa. Get in here. Bender's all right. They got him away. This here's Tom Cooper, a friend of mine. We better get to headquarters. Pa, why are those men hitting each other? Drive by the school, will you? Erie Street. Them's bullies, Cassie Marie. Union man's just fighting back. You can't bust a union by busting heads. What's a union? It's kind of like a family, honey. You know, working together. 
Now, do you see why I kept your basket so long? It's just whittling foolishness. Do you have any others like these? Just toys for the youngins. Birds and critters. Hmm. I reckon Amos has them all now. It's a chant thing. It's more than a toy. Yeah. A friend of mine was admiring it. He's an interior decorator, really very well known. And he said that he has never seen carving like this. The children tell me that you're working on something larger, a block of cherry wood. Uh-huh. How big a piece is it? Stands about yay high. It ain't near finished. Might I look at it one day? Why, yes, I reckon. They live in Mary Hill. We have the address. Did you know that Cassie was the only child to draw a tree? I'm afraid her reading ain't too good. Oh, she'll learn. She has a very high intelligence rating. There might be another problem, though. The school doctor is coming in on Tuesday morning. Can you be here then? She's sick? Oh, no, not a bit. The doctor's just going to examine her eyes. I gotta see Reuben's teacher, Mrs. Stringer. Well, she's down the corridor to the right, room number 14. I'll return your basket this afternoon, Mrs. Nelson. Mrs. Stringer? I come to see you about my young and my boy. You'll have to hurry. I've been talking to mothers all afternoon. The child's name? Reuben Nevels. Well, what's the matter? He just don't seem happy. You Hill, you Southern people who come up here, don't you realize it would be a great change for your children? Well, Reuben has not accepted the change. I'm giving him a you in conduct. He just won't get along with other children. But he, he weren't never bad to fight. Last week, Mrs. Neville, a small boy with a toy gun was teasing Reuben, just poking at him in fun. And Reuben completely lost his temper. Then he bragged about having a real gun of his own and shooting at a bear. Now, of course, the boy called him a liar. And Reuben slapped him down. Now, I sent Reuben to the principal, and he was punished. I will not have lying and arrogance in my class. Reuben weren't lying. He's had him a rifle since he were 10 year old. And all my young'uns was taught never to point a toy gun, in case one day they might forget and use a real one that way. That's very interesting, but I see no point in continuing this discussion. Reuben is in Detroit now. He will have to adjust to his surroundings. That's the most important thing in life. That's what you're learning, my young'uns? Of course. So as if one day they was to go to Germany, they, they could adjust? Learn to get along with, with them Nazis and Hitler? How dare you twist my words that way? I'm much obliged to you for your time, ma'am. You can't roll out people like biscuit dough. What's that first letter, Cassie? Z. Good. Now the next line. O. Mm, not quite. It's got a tail. What's an O with a tail? Like a piglet. Q. Right. And the letter next to it? P. Well, now, let's try a little magic, shall we? Here. I'm going to slip these on. There, behind your ears. There we go. Now, I'm going to put a lens in here. There we are. And now. It's a Q, then an R, then a T, then a P, then an N. Very good. Nothing wrong with that eye. Put it there. Put this one in there. And now read. X, M, F, A, K, L. Well, you certainly know your letters. Can you read? Some, if, if and the print's big. Callie, Lou can't neither. Well, you send her to me and we'll show her the magic, all right? She's right there. Of course, it's, it's so dark in here. It, it's nice to have a friend, huh? Okay. Now, I'm going to put this one. 
Come in here. Very easy. Now, I want you to read this. Try that. The Lord is my... Shepherd. Shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restored my soul. Anywhere there ain't patrols. Reuben just took off on his own. Across all kinds of streets he shouldn't have. Cut across that land by the railroad. Don't sound so terrible to me. And Miss Stringer seen him. And his youngins, kids, ain't supposed to walk by the railroad tracks. Well, maybe he misses the fields and the woods. How'd you do today, Miss Casey Marie? Miss Boshinsky had me read in front of the whole class. Oh, my Ruben's gonna get licking. Hush, now, you wake your ball. Hey, what's the racket here? Ruben walked home on the field by the railroad tracks. Well, we ain't allowed to walk. She was real pleased, Ma, and she gave me a storybook to bring home. Look, I'm gonna read it to Callie Lou. I'm getting a licking. Ruben? Ruben? Clovis. Ruben? Come in here. What's going on? You gotta walk where they tell you to walk. It's for your own safety. The way y'all are carrying on about it, think I killed a man. You walk where they tell you to walk. What's the matter with you, boy? You're always in trouble. It ain't my fault. The youngins don't like me. Miss Stringer, she hates me. And now she hates me worse than ever because you come bawling her out saying I wasn't happy. She made fun of me in front of everybody. Things was bad enough for you to come sticking your big nose in. No, Clovis, don't. You get in your room till you can come out here and apologize to your mama. Rest you young and clear out. Clyde, turn the radio on good and loud for Reuben so he'll have something to listen to in his room. I ain't gonna have him talking to you like that. What'd you go raise a racket with that teacher for? You don't know nothing about schools. Rest of the kids is doing all right. You've set Reuben again Detroit, so he hates school and everything else. It's you as much wrong with him as anything. never been this late before. Clyde and me ain't seen him all day. This one's all black and squishy. Yeah, Ma's trying to feed us rotten bananas. Try another one. I'm always trying to make a fast buck off of you, Ma. Your mama ain't used to buying. Y'all get rid of that and go do your homework. Gertie, I think we better call the police. No. He'll come. I know he'll come. He's just waiting somewheres. I feared to come home. Well, I gotta go to work. If he ain't here when I get back, I'm calling the cops. All right. 
Dear Paul, I took $20 to pay my way back. I hope it don't run you short on the car payments. I don't steal. I will pay it back. Back home, I can work and trap for Grandpa. I can't stay here no more. Your ever-loving son, Reuben. I'm glad. Found it in my billfold at work. Go on home and tell your wife a foreman said to me. Who would have thought a foreman would have so much heart? Oh, honey, you sat up all night working on this thing. The Christ all whittled out of one piece. You could have made a flat cross in half the time with a flat Jesus Christ glued on top. A jigsaw is what you need. They'll cut out anything. By the dozen. Jesus Christ is jumping jacks. It's all the same to a jigsaw. I'll be in the senior class, see you all around the back. See, I got your money, I got your money. Run around my home. Kevin, that's a Cali way. Hey, Gert, look at Ape out. He's finished. Let me see. He looks so sad, Ma. This one's gonna be laughing. Well, I don't know, Casey Marie. Maybe he will. Oh, could I have a nickel for a popsicle? With all these kids in the alley that hasn't got one. Enoch. Thanks, Victor. <laughs> me too, me too. Casey. Why'd you learn to do that? My old man, you know lots of tricks. He's a little man, he's quick. I was big like an ox, so he just learned me the one. <laughs> Girl, when you buy yourself some pretty shoes, and Max, she's crazy about shoes. Ten dollars on your pay for a hog. A hog? <laughs> Not for here. I'm saving for when we go back home. She put a lot of work in that. I know it. You heard from Reuben? He's living with my folks, helping on their farm. Ah, uh, it'll be better for him. There's some people don't ever do good outside their country, like my mom. Well, thanks, Kurt. I wish Reuben would have gone to my folks. Your mom will work him like a mule. Give him no schooling, like she done you. Won't be forever. We'll be going back home pretty soon, once the war's over. Home to what? I can hear them all now, especially your mama. Poor Gert, back here with that tinker and Clovis and not a nickel to his name. Tinkering. I'll show him his money in tinkering. You want to stay here? Of course I want to stay here. I got a good job. Youngins is all in school. We never had that with me hauling coal and you scrabbing on that farm. You'd be better off watching over Cassie. She run by me just now, gibbering and a-jabbering to the thin air. She's doing real well in school since she got them eyeglasses. You can't hardly stop her reading now. You better stop that foolishness of her talking to herself. Folks are thinking she's choir. You don't make her quit, you'll have another Reuben. And she can't run home. Oh, Ma, you know what that pretty Kelly Lou done? Shade up all my popsicle. Now, that's enough of that, Cassie Marie. You stop playing that silly game. I ain't a playing. Don't be sassing me. Just quit. You know there ain't no Kelly Lou. Now, mind me, honey. Honey. Back home, you never did have nobody to play with but Jip. So you thought up Callie Lou. But you're a big girl now. You can't go around 
talking to yourself anymore? Ma, don't you like coming here no more? Cassie, go out and play with the others now. Your pa's right. There ain't no Kelly Lou. Got a clean shirt, old woman? Me and Whit's going to a meeting. It's union again. Union means as much as a job up here. You just be glad I'm doing good in it. It ain't right. Gertie, you don't know nothing about it. This ain't like back home. I don't mean your old union. I mean Cassie Marie. A body's got to have something of their own. I'll be back for supper. You can see little girls in my eyes, Cassie Marie. Don't cry, Callie Lou. You're a big girl now. Stay over them little trees across the track. I'll come see you whenever I can. Self's like. Patsy Marie, come and eat something. Come on, honey. I ain't hungry, Ma. Can I just stay out and play? You eat something first. Rider of the Plains led the What's fight the for law and order. Oh, Ma, I went on myself right. My classmate, I don't know the kids laughed at me. Oh, that's nothing. Don't fret. You want clean pants? Miss Lashinsky washed them out for me and dried them in the teacher's room. Don't tell Claudy. No. Right now. I've reached the land of corn and wine, and all its riches freely mine. Where shines undimmed one blissful day, and Ma, I can't all hear my love has passed. Can I go out and play? I guess so, honey. It was my friend, the man with the mask. He told me what to do and say here in the <clears throat> Then he added something else. What was that? It's at the end of his note. I'll read it to you. He says, always remember this. One man plus courage is a majority. One man plus courage is a majority. Why, that's wonderful. But who is he? Did he sign his name? It's written right here. The Lone Ranger. <laughs> I have 
have a surprise for you and Kelly Lou. Come on, Casey. Come feed that hungry child of yours. Stay, Gert. Them undertakers murders you. It's money every minute. Money? I got money. I got money, Clovis. Can we take her if we pay? Won't it do? Money. Ain't it enough? I want to take her. 
take her home. She's gone. says you gotta sleep. Go to sleep, honey. I can't never get this part right. You'll have to set up. Where's Amos? He's playing. Where is he, Amos? Gert, you've been in here two weeks. Don't you go outside. Taking him right next door to play with Weta. It's all right, Ma. We'll hold both his hands. Get up now, Gert. These kids need you. Oh. Got a drink for me, kid? Yeah. There's some air in here. Oh. Listen, you gotta listen. Spring, kiddo. War's about over. I need you. I need a dream. Victor's aiming to buy a house and have his mom move in with us, and I ain't gonna eat them Polish dumplings all the rest of my life. <laughs> you gotta start dreaming again, Gert. Something can't nobody take away from you. What's this they giving you? Goose balls in water. You got a hole in your life, and that ain't the way to fill it. Now get up, or I'm gonna send Victor's ma in here to feed you dumplings. Yuck. I'll be back tomorrow to help you clean up your room. Hey, what's a dream? 
Same as yours. Home. For you, Ma. They're giving out grass seed and fertilizer at the project office. A garden? That'll cost a heap. I got some money from babysitting. You short on cash? We on strike. Now it's all right. Getting strike pay. But ain't much left over. We had to burn your coat, but there wasn't nothing left inside. They took it all, Gertie, for Cassie. And cops sent us to an undertaker. It wasn't so good. All of it? It's all gone? Can't we have a garden? I'll do all the digging. It won't last long, Gertie. Cooper says they'll break soon. We just gotta hang on. That's Union. Union's just folks looking out for themselves. Like Tom says, people ain't rabbits. Rabbits never make a sound till you kill them. Then it's just one little squeak. You want me to be a rabbit? I got the grass seed. They give me some flower seeds, too. What kind? Well, I asked the lady that. She looked at me like I was crazy and said flowers. Look at the big straw man, Kalu. How much for cabbages? Uh, for for Dana. Uh, turnips? Uh, ten cents a pound. Uh, I'll take uh, six pounds. Six a pound. Uh, you're no sick now? I'm better. You want a summer flower? No money. These, uh, these are not so hot. Uh, you take any anyway. Turn up for 60 cents. in the yard. My mom? She come live with us now. Flint's protection men are real buzzards. It's gonna get rough. Real rough. Look here, old woman. Got a present for you. Tom here helped me get the parts. You got nothing else to do. It's a jigsaw, Ma. Watch. You can turn them out by the dozens now. Jesus Christ, just jumping jacks, anything you want. Don't have to waste all that time whittling. You make a pattern, I'll cut out the parts. Kids can string them together. I ain't got no wood. I know a place where you can get Cheap. Gotta keep it quiet, though. We ain't supposed to run power tools in the project. Ain't it? Get me some coal. Amos, come here. Company knows damn well their only chance is to hit Bender. We're covering him day and night. Night's when they'll try it. You want me to help out? Fine. But I warn you, these guys are animals. Wait a minute. Well, I can't breathe. 
Babe. Oh. It's all track. It's just fit for kindling. Just look around. Them's government bins, solid made, real good. But you just buy them for scrap, don't you? Don't buy nothing, lady. I get paid for hauling it out. Buy it. Uh, whatever you can load in that wagon, one dollar. And uh, I don't lend hammers, screwdrivers. <laughs> for me. I'm taking off or I get scared. You can't just go. Where are you going to sleep tonight? In a bus headed for the ocean. I grew up by the ocean. Victor's ma, she ain't never even seen it. She ain't never even been out of Detroit. She wants to stay stuck in this dump all her life. Honey, you're 19 years old. You need somebody. Ain't you got no people to go to? I don't need nobody. I learned that in there. Victor's ma can find him a nice Polish girl. <sighs> I wish you'd been my people. Max, he's a good man. I'll write you. So? They cut the strike pay. Had to put money on the car. There's only two payments to go. What? I saw four jumping jacks. And a cop took one. A cop in a squad car. He stopped and asked what I was doing. And I said, wouldn't he like a dog for his little girl? He said, how would I know he had a little girl? But he laughed and he kept it. You done real good, honey. But there's only seven fifty here. Well, I didn't ask him for no money. You learning, son. Cops earn more than strikers. I'm gonna have a cop speaking to me personal now, just like Mr. Daly. Sure. Where'd she go? I don't know. She said she'd write. She'd come back to me. I could find her. Pretty? No. Why has she left? Maybe because she didn't belong. Look. What you done to it? Oh, I done it. Don't you like it? Oh, it's ugly. Howdy, Gert. <sighs> we can't afford foolishness like paints. Now, don't jump on me. That's to help with your dolls. I'll save you a lot of time whittling. Is time going to buy groceries? Look at this, Clovis. That's all I got left after paying last month's rent. And by rights, this month's is due. 
How am I going to buy food? Get credit, like everybody else. You're so mule-headed about that. You can get stuff on account down at the store. Make your payback double, like they done you at all the other stores. We can pay it off when the strike's over. You're good with money. Lord, the money you saved, if that damn crooked funeral parlor hadn't took it all. With what Henley left you, must have had over $600, enough to buy a piece of land. If I'd have known you had all that, I'd have said, buy a place and wait for me. Then when the war was over, I'd have come rolling in. We'd have been all set. You always hated the farm. Clovis, you, you just spent that money for a truck. I knowed you would. You sold the cow for tires. I couldn't see you working and working and always giving away half of it. I wanted you to have what you wanted. Oh, for God's sake, Gertie. Don't waste all that time whittling on them. You want them quick and cheap. Paint them. Don't tell me what to do. All my life, I've been doing what I was told. First Ma, and then you. Well, 16 years, I dreamed of us having our own farm. And I worked, and I saved up. And you said, come to Detroit. You never cared what I wanted. You never asked. You left home with your bag all hidden away, didn't you? You planned on not coming back. And now look, we're stuck in this hole, throwing money all around, and you on strike with your precious union, and Reuben gone, and Cassie, Cassie Marie. Oh. You've gone your own way always, Clovis, and I've had to go too. Well, these dolls. This is all that's feeding our youngins now. And they're mine. Don't you tell me to do it your way. I ain't doing it no more. I got him on the head. Blood's from his scalp, that's all. Did, did you call the police? Are you kidding? Clint's got the cops in his pocket. This is Detroit, honey. Yeah. Easy, easy. Gert. Hey, Matt. Clovis got himself hurt. <sighs> trouble behind it. Well, I figure the union's worth a little trouble. You gotta learn to look behind you, buddy. Quit. That old boy you popped. Yeah, he ain't getting up in a hurry. What do you mean? It means we got trouble. A lot of eyes out there. Did they see your car? No, it was Clovis's. Well, they set the cops on you? We all got to get out of sight for a while. Ain't no place to go. The guy I know with a farm outside of town needs a tractor rebuilt. Now, I was going to take Clovis. It's about a week's work. Is it safe? Sure, it's safe. Now, you get a good sleep, and I'll come by for you in the morning. How are you gonna get by? We'll manage. She got me up. You didn't sleep much. I'll be gone a week or so. I'll write you. It's a farm, so maybe I can bring some stuff back. Uh-huh. <laughs> He's here. <clears throat> 
Gertie, I wish I'd never seen Detroit. I tried to work for us the best way I knew how. Nothing come out right. We'll get back home one day. I swear we will. I love you, honey. You just take care of yourself. Pa? Are you leaving now, Pa? Mm -hmm. Bye, Pa. Bye, son. Honey, our car's parked out in the alley. We should move it before they come repossess it. Can't make a payment till I get this job done. Take care of your mama now. Yes, sir. Look at the strikers, Amos. Watch out, Miss Neville. You can't cross our picket lines. You'll be a scab. Can't you read, dummy? You crossed the picket line. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Come on, Mr. Skyro. I'll take care of you. Thank you, Weed Eye. Sorry, right, Mrs. Neville. I'm being well looked after. Hello. If it's not an inconvenience, you just said I might look at some of your work. Of course. Please come in, Mr. Skyros. Thank you. Amos. Someday he'll have a face. I can't seem to find it. It's there. Waiting. Oh. It's beautiful. Have you made any more of these? I ain't got time for such as that no more. Could you have? What do you mean? Do you remember that friend that I mentioned that admired your little bird so much? He has a store downtown, and he asked if he could commission you to make some for him. How long would it take you to, say, make 50 of them? 50? Uh-huh. He's convinced that he could sell a great many of them. He could only pay you 450 a piece, which is far less, of course, than they're worth. I go pretty quick when I got me the time. Just go at your own speed. Ask the children to let me know when you've made maybe a dozen. He, uh, he sent you $50 for the wood that you'll need. I know how difficult these days are for you. And you must promise that you're going to finish this. Well, I won't keep you. It must be supper time. Mr. Skyros, thank you. Privilege. Clovis Nevels? He ain't to home. You Mrs. Nevels? Uh-huh. You got a boy down in Kentucky? Reuben. You have to call him. We got a message. What happened? Officer in Kentucky said it was an emergency. You can phone from the station if you like. I'll come with you, Ma. Hello? Reuben? Here's Ma. Reuben? What's wrong? You all right? Ma? Grandpa died. Ma? You there? When did he die? Yesterday morning. I found him in his workshop. And Annie Mag's here. Grandma's going back with her. Did you get my... Reuben? Honey, I can't hear you. Hello? Hello? Here, sit down. We ain't had no letter. No? What'd it say? Reuben? Hello? I'm sorry, Ma. Police. What? Oh, okay, thank you. Two fifty. The car costs two fifty, Ma. I ain't got no money with me. I'll bring it to you. You got a boy who sells dolls? He 
Enoch. Yeah, Enoch. He's a smart kid. He give me a doll. My kid got so mad, she, she tried right off to take it apart. And when she couldn't, she threw it at me. <laughs> Can't get it away from her now. Can I bring it to you tomorrow? Forget the money. You get your ma on home. She's all tore up. And don't you let your kid brother go selling after dark or getting to no cars with no strangers. Oh, we know about that. We've been here a long time. That's what he must have meant. Read it, honey. Dear Ma, I am writing for Grandpa. He is very sick. All Grandma does is cry and say you deserted them. She wants to sell the farm and go live with Annie Mae. Grandpa says if he dies, the farm is yours and she must not sell it. But if you don't come, she will sell it because she says what I do is not enough. I am writing because Grandpa told me to. Your loving son, Reuben. Is Reuben there all alone? Reuben's got sense. Honey, look after Amos for me. Come on, Enoch, I need you to give me a hand. Honey, you've been to the car lot with your pa to make payments, ain't you? Sure, down past the mill. Josephson's. Just point me in the right direction. What car? Tell me the way. Not even one more week? It's near all paid off. No way, lady. Cash on time. That's our rules. You got till Friday or we repossess. Look at Ma. It's just like Pa's truck, only newer. Not so new as your car, Sonny. You'll find some way to keep this. You got any sense? If I can get the money to pay off the car, would you swap it for that truck? Lady, you're crazy. Would you? Sure I would. I want somebody to check it over first. Well, we ain't got nothing to hide. How much we owe? $52 with tax. We throw in a spare tire? <laughs> sure, why not? Tools and a jack? Don't push your luck, kid. I'm gonna go make out the papers, lady. You wanna come to the office? Hot in about having it looked over. Yeah. Ma, that was your money for wood. How you gonna make dolls? Go go see your scrap wood man. He ain't got nothing. Well, it won't hurt none to look. Who you gonna have check out the truck? <laughs> Victor, when he comes off shift. Looks OK to me. Good Lord, Gert, why do you want a truck? Well, I'll tell you tomorrow. I've got to get me some wood. Wood? Now, you listen to me. When Max was a young and did she live near the sea? Someplace in Mississippi. Biloxi. If you can leave your ma, that's where you ought to look. She went home. Ma, why are we going to see Cassie and Marie? We're just going out whilst Claudia and Enoch are playing. I'm going to need to borrow your wagon. It's outside. Want a cup of coffee, girl? Later, maybe. I got me an errand to do. You heard from Clovis? No. You hear from Whit? They'll make out. How's the merry-go-round? Still going around. Me with it. At least we got my money coming in. Quiet. Where are you taking it? 
to show to a fella. Me and Cal Luke come too? Why, sure. You get a good price now. What's that? Where are you taking them? You make that? You leave a big. Ain't you gonna give him no face? Maybe it's there if you look real hard. What's it look like? Maybe like your ma. My ma? Or we does, ma. Maybe like you, Frankie. Like most anybody. I don't buy nothing. I ain't selling. What do you got there? Cherry wood. It's Christ, ain't it? I'd like it sawed up for whittling. Small pieces, 50 of them. When you were so near finishing? I'm just beginning. I'd like it sawed up now. Have to be split first. Better than that, lady, I'll get you a wedge.
Can I join ya, yonder bound maiden? Can I join ya, tell me no lie? The road home is a hard one Fifty miles as the swallows fly Sweet tender maiden Ain't you aiming high Dreams, dreams are fading Can you find one before you die Find them all, maiden, by and by Just before the lamps were lighted Just before the children came, while the room was very quiet, I heard someone call my name. I am a pilgrim and a stranger, traveling through. I got a